Okay, so as you know, Halloween is closing up. We are in the month of October, and since it is October, there's a big hype around darkness. There's a big hype. There's a big hype around the the occult things. There's a big hype around Halloween. There's a big hype around you know things that are spooky season. But let me go in and tell you the reality of spooky season. A lot of things of spooky season are are made to look friendly they're made to look attractive they're made to look appealing to you right but that's one of the tricks of the enemy the enemy will try to put a pretty, a pretty dress on sin the enemy will try to put a pretty dress on the demonic will try to put a pretty dress on the satanic on the things that are occult and the things that are detestable to god that are a big big deal in front of the eyes of god it is a major sin to be in agreement with witchcraft even if it's make-believe even if it's even even if it's like harry potter even if it's like uh claim to be fake or, or claim to be fictional um we we would still be in agreement with with darkness you know you, you don't really know what you're agreeing with right you don't know what you're dabbling with you're dabbling with things that you don't fully understand they look appealing to you like oh it's colorful magic or it's disney ma magic or, or it's this and that but you in reality you don't know the realities behind that kind of stuff which is evil it's satanic and it is detestable to god uh come accompany me to deuteronomy chapter 18 I'm going to start in verse 9. I'm reading the NLT. It says here, When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, be very careful not to imitate the detestable customs of the nations living there. For example, never sacrifice your son or daughter as a burnt offering and do not let your people practice fortune telling or use sorcery or interpret omens or engage in witchcraft. Or cast spells or function as mediums or psychics or call forth the spirits of the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. It is because the other nations have done these detestable it is because the other nations have done these detestable things that the Lord your God will drive them out ahead of you. But you must be blameless before the Lord your God. The nations are about to displace consul the nations you are about to displace consult sorcerers and consult sorcerers and fortune tellers but the lord your god forbids you to do such things look at this there are consequences to you partaking in these things read number 12 again it is because the other nations have done these things it is because the other nations have done these detestable things that the lord your god will drive them out ahead of you so once someone engages in that stuff to God, you have become his enemy. What is it saying, James? To be friends with the world, to have a friendship with the world or the things of the world is to become, is to be an enemy to God. It is serious to God. It, it is a big deal. I'm not going to get into the origins of sorcery. And I want to go ahead and talk about Simon the Sorcerer for a bit real quick. If you accompany me to the book of Acts, Chapter 8, verse 9, I'm reading the NLC, says here, A man named Simon had been a sorcerer for many years, amazing the people of Samaria and claiming to be someone great. Everyone from the least to the greatest often spoke of him as the great one, the power of God. Look at the deception. They listened closely to him because for a long time he had astounded them with his magic. That stuff is real, guys. The ability to move things with your hands or the ability to to play tricks on people. Hello, trick or treat, Halloween. The, the ability to to even manifest is, is a form of of, um, of of I'm talking about new age manifestation, like new age speaking into existence. Um, it is outside of God's design, therefore making it sin. Right. So that, that stuff is real. And, and the scary thing is that this stuff actually works, guys. Um, but that is occultic power. That is demonic power. And the demons might give you what you want in the moment, but they bite back. Guys, the devil does not does not. The devil will collect. If you give the devil an inch, he'll take a foot. The devil is not your friend. That's where all this power comes from. The sorcery, the magic, the fortune telling the card reading all that stuff comes from demons and demons do not have a friendly personality they can imitate your friend they can they can pose like a friend but they are not your friend they will collect and they will torment you and they those things are evil
that way I don't get too into detail in, in this video and I don't get flagged. But those things are, are, are not your friends. They don't care about you. They don't want the best for you. So use wisdom, okay? Just because it works and you, you, just because it works doesn't mean that it's good, okay? Verse 12, but now the people believed Philip's message of good news concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. As a result, many men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself believed and was baptized. I'm going to keep reading this because it's, it's important. He began to follow Philip wherever he went, and he was amazed by the signs and great miracles Philip performed. But Philip was under the unction of the Holy Spirit. That is a correct spirituality, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Okay? It's not sorcery. That is the illegal type of, of, of uh, spiritual power in the eyes of God. Okay? Verse 14, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the pro that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John there. As soon as they arrived, they prayed for those new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them, for they had only been baptized for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands upon these believers and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given when the apostles laid their hands on people, he offered them money to buy this power. And let me have this power too, he exclaimed, as in Simon the Sorcerer, so that when I lay my hands on people, they will receive the Holy Spirit. But he, Simon the Sorcerer wasn't for real. He just he just wanted to use that to amaze people. Mm, you get what I'm saying? Because he was still a sorcerer at heart. Verse 20, but Peter replied, May your money be destroyed with you for thinking God's gift can be bought. You have no part in this, for your heart is not right with God. We cannot be gold diggers with God. If you're seeking after power, and that is your sole purpose for the sake of, of amazing people, if that's if that's what's in your heart, repent. Repent. God is not pleased with that type of with that type of heart. God wants you to, to be in the spiritual things because of Jesus. Not for selfish reasons. Not so you can amaze people. Verse 22, repent of your wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive your evil thoughts. For I can see that you are full of bitter jealousy and are held captive by sin. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 14. This is specifically for you, Christian, that is supportive of Halloween. That thing says there is nothing wrong with Halloween. With the magic that goes on around, even if it's make-believe or fictional. Okay? Deuteronomy 18 verse 14 the nations who are about to displace console sorcerers and fortune tellers but the lord your god forbids you to do such things god is the same yesterday today and forevermore if god wasn't okay with sorcery back then he is most definitely not okay with sorcery right now magic fortune telling consulting the dead thinking that it's cute okay that is still a very serious thing in the eyes of god it is it is very serious okay even if Christians partake in that or they agree with that, the Re the book of Revelation says that sorcerers, that those that practice sorcery, that made a practice of sorcery and witchcraft, they will get thrown into the lake of fire. That is Revelation. <clears throat> and just so you get a perspective of how much God hates witchcraft, turn with me to, chap to Micah chapter 5, verse 11. Okay. It says here, I will tear down your walls and demolish your defenses. I will put an end to all witchcraft that there will be no more fortune tellers. He, that, that is a prophet Micah prophesying to Israel because Israel at some point had turned to witchcraft. They had turned to idol worship. They had turned to these foreign gods, to these other gods, to these idols. Okay, And God is a jealous God. So God was jealous for Israel. What does the New Testament say? That you are a real Jew if you believe in Jesus because you have been adopted into the kingdom of God. Okay? So modern so Israel in the New Testament is, is the country Israel. That is still God's people. But it's also us, the Gentiles. Okay? We are also part of the kingdom of God. Right? So this also applies to us in a sense. God still hates witchcraft. Okay? He still hates sorcery. Anything that has to do remotely with that stuff. He, he detests. It is detestable to God. It is an abomination. It's a, it's a serious sin in the eyes of God. Okay, we, we have to fear God. Not only that, we, you, when you participate in the, in the evil things, you open the door to the devil. You open the door to demons to work in your life, right? You give the demons a legal right, basically, to infiltrate your life, to infiltrate 
things around you. So there's no benefit from celebrating darkness or from agreeing with it, right? You might be tempted to go in and trick or treat or, or you might be tempted to go ahead and, and partake in a Halloween celebration. Or even if your church is, is doing this trunk or treat or, or fall festival, I would be very careful as a, as a minister of the gospel. I would I would advise you not to go to those things. Okay, if you can keep your distance, if you can stay away, stay away. Right? Don't partake. Don't volunteer. It's it's darkness, guys. I don't understand why churches are bringing the world to the church. I don't understand why the churches are are bringing darkness. Okay, the the Holy Spirit is the one that breaks bondages. Okay, you just the Book of Acts. Nobody. And even then, we have, to, we have to measure our hearts. We cannot be Simon the Sorcerer. That is very dangerous ground, right? So don't don't use the, the sacred things of God for show, okay? Do not use the holy things of God for profanity, for vanity. This is just advice. Guys, and back then... And back then they had Halloween right here. This would have abolished Halloween. If they did this back then, why can't we give up Halloween? Why can't Christian, why can't we stop agreeing with Halloween? Why can't we stop celebrating it? Even subliminally, Acts chapter 19, verse 18. Many who became believers confessed their sinful practices. A number of them who have been practicing sorcery brought their incantation books and burned them at the public bonfire. The value of the books was several million dollars. So the message of the Lord spread widely and had a powerful effect. Acts chapter 19, verse 18. That's a genuine believer. They gave up millions of dollars of their witchcraft. To follow the Lord Jesus. And us that don't even have that much in possessions. We refuse to consecrate and to respect the Lord on that day. We refuse to, to give up our own plans for God. We refuse to lay down our mentalities, our ideas. Just because we see our friends celebrating darkness. We want to partake in that because it looks fun. They burned millions of dollars because they had an encounter with God and they knew, God, you're real. I don't want nothing to do with darkness, no matter how appealing it feels or seems. As a, as, as a people of God, we got to do better. The world is at the end. We are at the verge of the end of time. Is God pleased with you? And God will never tell you, it's good that you celebrate Halloween. You will never hear him say that. Are we walking in the fear of the Lord? Or are we living for, for ourselves? If you're a Christian, you know, you know that Jesus said, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. How is celebrating Halloween? How is throwing a fall festival? How is doing trunk or treat, denying yourself and picking up your cross and following him? In fact, it's the contrary. You're making out with the devil. Imagine how Jesus feels. God is a jealous God. If we were in the Old Testament, people celebrating Halloween would be detestable to God. The act of celebrating Halloween is detestable to God. It have nothing to do with fortune tellers or sorcery, even if it's make-believe or fictional. Walk away with this. God looks at the heart, and it brings a lot of relief to people, but at the same time, it should terrify you. Because God looks at the heart and he sees the lack of fear of him. He sees the lack of reverence. The lack of wanting to consecrate. The lack of wanting to submit. The rebellion. Let's get that delusion out of our heads that we're right with God and we celebrate Halloween. That's delusional. God sees our rebellion. And we have to repent. No more of this lukewarm Christianity trunk or treat or harvest festival. That's just for PR. That's just to get more people. But it's not for the sake of their souls. It's for the tithes. It's for the money. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. That's why the big churches throw trunk or treats. 
Use it for the glory of Jesus. But do an outreach. Do an outreach. Don't don't let it resemble anything to do with Halloween. Don't go out to minister in a costume. In the book of Romans it says, So is it okay to sin if it brings glory to God? If my sin highlights the grace of God and the goodness of God, is sin then permissible? Is it okay? And then Paul says, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So there's no reason why we should compromise. And we use the excuse of like, oh, well, that person was saved because of our compromise. God is not pleased. And it says so in the word of God in the book of Romans. So let's not be lukewarm. Stand strong. You open the door to Halloween, you open the door to the devil. It is a huge satanic ritual. Be wise. Use discernment. If the Holy Spirit tells you no, walk in the Spirit. Otherwise, we will be in rebellion. And God takes these kind of things real serious. So, share this video. I know it's October. So, God bless you guys. Till next time.